Hello, and welcome to the Michael Kurtz Movie Talk, coming to you right here on my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Kurtz, I am your host today, and listen, there were a lot of fantastic movies this summer. I can count at least 20 that I watched, probably even more. Um, but I think that in terms of post-pandemic, this last summer is the first time that we've seen a lot of these really big films come out. So today, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna rank my top 10 favorite films of the summer and also my top five least favorite films of the summer. In honor of the last day of summer, today is the 23rd of September. It's the last day of summer. So let's get right into it. First of all, what I want to go over is what classifies as a summer movie because I know that summer typically starts, technically starts on June, what is it, 18th, 20th, whatever it is. But there are a lot of fantastic movies that came up before then. So in this video, we're gonna classify a summer movie as a movie that was released between June 1st and September 22nd, which was yesterday, um, because no movies came out today. So it, it must be a feature film. It has to have been on a streaming platform, a premier streaming platform. We're talking about Disney Plus and Netflix and all sorts of good stuff. So feature film had to be in theaters or had to be on those premier streaming platforms. Now, when I talk about my favorite and least favorite movies of the year, of the summer, it's different than the best movies of the summer. Um, and, and here's why. When you are ranking films and talking about subjectivity, I think that favoritism is a big part of that subjectivity. Now, when you put, when you think of it as a favorite film, you kind of put all your other opinions of the technical aspects out the door. It doesn't matter um, how well the makeup was or how well the story was. If it's my favorite film, it's my favorite film. It doesn't matter if I like the, st the story was brilliant or terrible. It doesn't matter any anything about that. When we're talking about best films, and that does come into play. Because if we're talking about best films, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer gets it, obviously. It is the best technical film of the summer. But we're not doing best films. We're doing my personal favorite films. And I think when you're talking about best and favorite films, neither one is the correct way to rank movies. It's just the one we're doing today is favoritism. Um, if you liked a movie that I didn't like, you know that I'm happy for you that you liked that. I wish it worked for me. And if I liked a movie that you didn't like, well, it's too bad. I wish you liked it. Um, neither way is wrong. So let's jump right into it. We're going to talk about my least favorite films of the summer of 2023. We're going to start out with Asteroid City, directed by Wes Anderson, of course, distributed by Focus Features and Universal. Now, Asteroid City, it's, it's a very unique film. It's probably one of the most unique films I've ever seen. And the trailer, when I saw it, and then I saw the movie, it's really a what you see is what you get in terms of the aesthetic, in terms of kind of the story surrounding the Asteroid City part. Um, here, here's what I really liked about the film. Within Asteroid City, the story was actually quite entertaining and, and interesting. I quite enjoyed it. I loved the performance given by Maya Hawke. I think she was a star in that film. The Dear Alien Who Art in Heaven song was brilliant. I was smiling the whole time. The kids who acted in this film were phenomenal. Big fan of that. There's a lot of A-listers in this film. Look at the look at the lineup. Tom Hanks, Scarlett Johansson, Tilda Swinton, Edward Norton, Willem Dafoe, Steve Carroll, Maya Hawke, Margot Robbie, she was in it too, Jeff Goldblum. So many A-listers in this film, which really helped to its benefit. Now, I say all those nice things, but... I'm about to go over what I really don't like about the film, why it's number five. Um, the, the bad part is that it's it's a really slow burn, which isn't a terrible thing always, but it leaves a lot of room between dialogue where I just felt like nothing was happening. Um, Wes Anderson, I think, should have focused more on the Asteroid City part of the movie. There was this other aspect where Asteroid City was part of this play that these other characters were going through. And I didn't I didn't think it was that interesting. And when you have something like that, where you have this play, it's something outside of the actual film. You tend to, these characters were breaking character a lot of the time. I just didn't think it worked really well. I think it kind of stopped the momentum throughout the film. There was a really big break whenever they did that in the story that they were trying to tell. I really wish I got more of that story. Overall, I think the movie didn't really connect with me as much as I wanted to. It's not a terrible film, but I just wish it was more than what it was. Let's move on to number four, least favorite movie of the summer. Haunted Mansion, directed by Justin Simeon, distributed by Walt Disney Pictures. It's 
Haunted Mansion is not a terrible movie. It's just lackluster in a lot of spots. A lot. I think the coolest part was the, uh, it was the Hatbox Ghost towards the end, played by Jared Leto. Super cool. Very fascinating. I loved the way that they designed that character at the end. I thought it was really menacing. I thought it felt like a PG-13 movie, whereas a lot of the film did not feel like a PG-13 movie. Walt Disney Pictures, again, showed that they really can't make great movies with big budgets. It reminded me a lot of Jungle Cruise. You have A-listers, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and you have Emily Blunt in there, and it just wasn't good at all. Same thing with Haunted Mansion. It felt more like a PG movie than a PG-13 movie. I absolutely love um, who, who, plays the, who plays the pastor. Um, he also, he's also in Loki. Dang, I forgot his name. I don't know why I forgot his name. But he, he was... I like him as an actor, but he just wasn't that good in this movie. Overall, I, what can you really expect from a Disney, a Walt Disney Picture movie that doesn't have like the Marvel Studios or Lucasfilm um, logos on them? Or like the Pixar logo, you know? Not much. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three, least favorite movie of the summer 2023. It's gotta be Joyride. Directed by Adele Lim, distributed by Lion Pictures. Now, Joyride is a really dirty comedy. And that doesn't mean it's bad. Like a lot of these films on this list, a lot of the concepts were there. But the movie itself just didn't deliver on it. The comedy... You really have to love dirty comedy to think this movie is that funny. And personally, I just don't connect with this kind of dirty comedy. Um, it had a lot to do with like very intimate sex. And I just didn't find it that interesting. I think things moved a little too quickly at ex the expense of the comedy. Whereas in the trailer, you see that there's this scene where they're on a train um, in China, and then there's this drug dealer, and this drug dealer doesn't want to get caught, so she blows all bunch of cocaine and meth onto the main characters, and now they they all have to hide, or else they're all going to be deported or put in jail or whatever it is. And I thought that was going to be a really main point of the film to really progress the film. Turns out it happened for like two minutes, and it was never referenced ever again. It wasn't really the cause of what they were trying to do the rest of the film. And because it moved so quickly, it, it took away from the comedy, and quite frankly, it took away from the story. Comedies focus a lot on the comedy, and when it's not funny, you don't really have much that's left. I just felt that when, because the comedy wasn't there for me, I wasn't getting much of the story left with it. You know, so that's just me. Number two, also another comedy that I didn't think was that great, it's The Blackening, directed by Tim Story, also distributed by Lionsgate. I think that when you talk about storytelling, a good story is a good story no matter who tells it. A bad story is a bad story no matter who tells it. And connecting on an experiential level with audiences cannot make a movie great on its own. It can only elevate it or it can make it go down another notch. For me, this made it go down another notch. This movie is a black murder mystery comedy. And Obviously, I'm not, I'm not black. <laughs> I'm a white man. And a lot of comedy had to do with being black. Um, and I think it, it definitely can work. I've seen movies where there's been comedy from, like, black comedy. And it's funny. I just didn't think this all was that funny for me. On its own, I think that the film struggled to really identify what it is. Whereas, in this movie, um... There were some genuinely horrific scenes and scary scenes where it was trying to be a horror. And then the next bit, they would do something stupid, like read each other's minds. And I know that's kind of part of the black comedy, but I think that much like Asteroid City, it just stopped the progression of the film and it got taken out of it when they would do things like read each other's minds, where it's kind of unrealistic in a way. Yeah, we're moving on. Okay. And finally, the first film, worst film of summer for me. It's got to be Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, directed by James Mangold, distributed by Walt Disney Pictures. Again, Walt Disney Pictures show how much you can waste on a movie. They spent over $300 million on this movie. One, 
didn't make a whole lot of money and cost them a lot, didn't even make 300 million. And you need about double, roughly double the amount that your budget is to make profit. 300 million, you can expect that around 600 million, they're gonna start making profit from the box office. They didn't even make 300 million in this movie. Didn't, it was not well received by critics, didn't make a whole lot of money, and frankly had the worst aspect that I think you can say about a movie. It was boring. It was super boring. I didn't like it. I thought the CGI at the beginning was terrible. I understand what they were trying to do. And it's hard to do that. The technology's not there yet. It, it looks terrible. You had to limit the action to an 80-year-old actor. I love Harrison Ford, but he was really limited. And when you have to compare this movie to other Indiana Jones movies, it just seems so uneventful. It was more of a journey than an adventure. I also felt that the movie went about 30 minutes too long. Everything they were doing was just incredibly anticlimactic. And I kept looking at my watch thinking, when is this going to end? Um, I do have to say that the end scene, when they're flying over um, the battle, the Siege of Syracuse scene, where they're flying over the Siege of Syracuse, that was quite excellent. I did like that. I wish I did more with that. I, I'm, I'm forgetting the actress's name, but when the actress punches Indiana Jones in the face and then all of a sudden goes black, there was so much more potential for action and fun. And that's kind of the story of the film. Well, that's it for top five least favorite movies of the summer. I do have to say that I didn't actively dislike any of them except Indiana Jones. I say least favorite because I still liked them, but... Indiana Jones really wasn't great. So stick around. Next time I'm going to do top 10 favorite movies of the year. Stick around for that next video. I'll see you soon. Have a great day.